Our special series, Autism, the Hidden Epidemic, continues now with a look at the power of early intervention. Former Miami Dolphins quarterback Dan Marino is one of the most successful football players in NFL history, but his biggest challenge was the one he faced at home. Dan and his wife Claire have six children, one of whom was diagnosed with autism. It was a struggle that ultimately turned into a success story. 16-year-old Michael Marino is a chip off the old block. The son of former Miami Dolphin quarterback Dan Marino, Michael is a sophomore at North Broward Prep in Florida. It's negative three times positive three. But Dan and his wife Claire were concerned early on when they noticed some delays in his development. First we thought, what an incredible baby we had because we remember you know, when he's probably, what, one and a half or two years old, it, you know, we put him in his crib and he wouldn't cry. We never really started with the sounds to say, you know, mama, dada, or water, juice, anything. I had actually talked to the doctor about it, the pediatrician, but he said, oh, you know, he's a boy, they're late bloomers, you know, don't worry about it. The Marinos decided to get Michael into a program for children with developmental delays. Two and a half, Michael was diagnosed officially mm -hmm. as autistic. Do you remember what that was like for the two of you? Originally, uh, the first time it was mentioned, I'm I didn't crying even, on TV now. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know. Um, I didn't even know what it was. You know, I was. The doctor said um, autism, and I said, "Oh, okay." And you know, I just sort of listened to him, and you don't know what to expect in the future, so it's very um, overwhelming. Just to find out what it is, and the, the shock of you know, you're not going to be sure what your son's going to be like, and what is it, and you got to learn about it, but. Yeah, you know, then then you go right to well, we're going to do whatever we can. Michael, your mom and dad describe you as a toddler, as somebody who had a hard time communicating and not talking. Do you remember wanting to talk and for whatever reason not being able to do it? It was kind of like I was frustrated, you know, like I wanted to get like a cup or something so I could get a drink, but I like couldn't say it. But you were so thinking I, it. Yeah, I was thinking it. I'd be like, mom, mom, like, cup. <laughs> He's walking! Damn. Michael began receiving intensive therapy from speech therapist Sue Cabot. When I first met Michael, it was pretty clear to me that he did have autism. He was pretty socially unaware. He was not communicative, very self-absorbed. We showed the Marino's video of Michael's early therapy. Does it bring back memories of what you were going through? Well, what it brings back for me is how well he's doing now, you know, and you know, what a miracle it's been and how all this has helped so much. Four months later, Michael began speaking. I was having trouble getting the right little cups and the right thing. Now all of a sudden I'm putting cards that have words on it and pictures on the, uh, on a line. Okay. You are going down there. Okay. To make like a story. How important was this early intervention though for Michael's development? It must have been critical. Right, I think very. Um, I just think for any child, you know, when you, as soon as you notice something like that, you need to get in and get get help. You know, it's extremely important that people recognize that with the right proper care and the proper therapies that kids can definitely get better and, and, and have a great life. All right. That's why Dan and Claire Marino decided to start a foundation which so far has raised over six million dollars for a variety of children's charities. Around, huh? Getting it going. In 1998, they built the Dan Marino Center at Miami Children's Hospital. It's a beautiful center and I want to thank you so much. It saved my son's life. The center specializes in treating children with autism and other developmental disorders all under one roof. What makes it all worthwhile is you see a family, you know, they come up to you and say that the developmental center is making a difference in, in their family's lives and their child's life. That's, you know, really a special feeling. You remember that. That's <laughs> very good. Neurologist that. Roberto actually, Tushman helped the Marino set up the center. I think that what we need to realize is that autism is a disorder that is a medical disorder in the same way that cancer is. And we have to provide those children and their families the kinds of support that can make a difference. Here it is. 
Oh, I like this one. But not every child with autism can make the same strides as Michael. Doctors still don't know why some children respond to early intervention and others sadly do not. On multiple choice. Michael is now in a special education program and is mainstream for classes like history and physical education. You know, I'm wondering if some families might look at the wonderful things that he's been able to accomplish and have hope that might be slightly unrealistic. There's no doubt. On the other hand, he's one of the reasons why we were able to start our foundation and, and make a difference. There you go. Good job. As for Michael, he's optimistic his about his future. Parents can look up and see that just because that their son has a problem doesn't mean that they still can't grow up and be as successful as a normal person. Doctors will tell you not to say it, but to me, he's cured, and there's not a problem, and he won't have a problem, you know, the rest of his life. A big thank you to Dan and Claire and Michael for taking part in our series. Tomorrow, we take a look at the different educational programs for children with autism. If you'd like more information about autism, you can go to our website at today.msnbc.com or to autismspeaks.org.